Hello everyone, I hope you're all doing well today. I'm just carrying on with where I left off yesterday. Thieves and prostitutes, Andreas whispered. That's what it says. Thieves and prostitutes? Our mothers were in that car, along with a teacher, a librarian, elderly people and a newborn baby. Thieves and prostitutes? Jonas looked at the writing. I grabbed his hand, thankful he couldn't read Russian. I wished he'd stayed on the train. Another line of red cattle wagons sat on tracks behind ours. The doors, however, were closed and locked with large bolts. We looked around, then ran under the ran, then ran under another train, dodging the splatters of waste. Andreas knocked on the bottom near a bathroom hole. A shadow appeared. What's your father's name? Andreas asked. Kostas Vilkas, I said quietly. We're looking for Petras. Ar Arvidas and Costas Vilkas, he whispered. The head disappeared. We heard scuffling on the floor of the car. The head reappeared. Not in this car. Be careful, children. Be very quiet. We scurried from car to car, dodging droppings and knocking. Each time a head disappeared. I felt my stomach tighten. Please, 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 Jonas would say. And then we'd move on, with warnings of caution or messages for loved ones. We reached the seventh car. The man's head disappeared. It was quiet inside. Please, 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 said Jonas. Jonas? Papa, we said, trying not to raise our voices. A match scraped across the wooden plank. Papa's face appeared in the hole. He looked grey and his eye was badly bruised. Papa, we're in the car over there, began Jonas. Come with us. Shh, said Papa. I can't. You shouldn't be here. Where is your mother? In the car. I said, happy yet horrified to see my father's bludgeoned face. Are you all right? I'm okay, he said. Are you okay? Is your mother okay? We're okay, I said. She doesn't know we're here, said Jonas. We wanted to find you. Papa, they broke into our house and... I know. They're attaching our train to yours. Where are they taking us, I asked. To Siberia, I think. Siberia? That couldn't be right. Siberia was half a world away. There was nothing in Siberia. I heard Papa talking inside the train car. His arm came out of the hole, holding some scrunched up material. Take this jacket and these socks. You'll need them. More noise came from inside. Papa handed out another jacket, two shirts and more socks. He then handed down a large piece of ham. Children, split this, eat it, Papa said. I hesitated and stared at the ham my father handed through the same hole people use as a toilet. Put it in your mouths right now, he said. I tore the thick piece of ham in quarters and handed some to Jonas and Andreas. I put the last piece in my dress pocket for mother. Lena, take this and give it to your mother. Tell her it's okay to sell it if she has to. Papa's hand came down to me, holding this gold wedding band. I stared at it. Lena, do you understand? Tell her it's in case she needs money. I wanted to tell him we had already traded a pocket watch for Jonas. I nodded and put the ring on my thumb, not able to swallow the ham past the lump in my throat. Sir, said Andreas, is Petrus Arrivedus in your car? I'm sorry, son, he's not, said Papa. This is very dangerous, you must all get back to your train. I nodded. Jonas? Yes, Papa, Jonas said, peering up at the hole. You're very brave to have come. You must all stay together. I know you'll take good care of your sister and mother while I am away. I will, Papa. I promise, said Jonas. When will we see you? Papa paused. I don't know. Hopefully soon. I clutched the bundle of clothes. Tears began dropping down my cheek. Don't cry, Lena. Courage, said Papa. You can help me. I looked up at him. Do you understand? My father looked at Andreas, hesitant. You can help me find you. He whispered. I'll know it's you. It's just like you know much. But you must be very careful. But... I started uncertain. I love you both. Tell your mother I love her. Tell her to think of the oak tree. Say your prayers, children, and I will hear them. Pray for Lithuania. Now run back. Hurry. My chest hurt and my eyes burned. I started to walk but stumbled. Andrews caught me. Are you okay? He said. His face looked soft, concerned. I'm fine, I said, quickly wiping my eyes and pulling free of his grasp. Let's go find your father. No, you heard him. Hurry, run back, tell your mother what he said. But what about your father, I asked. I'm going to try a few more. I'll meet you back at our car, he said. Just go, Lena, you're wasting time. I hesitated. 
are you scared to go alone? No, I'm not scared, I said. My father said we should stay together, but we'll go by ourselves. I snatched Jonas by the hand. We don't need him, right, Jonas? Jonas stumbled, looking over his shoulder at Andreas. Chapter 12. Halt! A voice commanded. We were so close, nearly under our train car. KVD boots marched towards us. I tucked my thumb and Papa's wedding band into my palm. Devi! The voice yelled. Jonas and I crept out from under the car. Lena! Jonas! yelled Mother, leaning out of the train. The officer pointed his gun at Mother, signalling for her to be quiet. He then circled around us, his boots coming closer with each turn. I felt Jonas edge up beside me. I tightened my fist, hoping the guard wouldn't see Papa's ring. We dropped something down the bathroom hole, I lied, lifting up the bundle. Mother translated my words into Russian for the guard. The officer looked at the socks on top of the heap I was holding. He grabbed Jonas and began searching his pockets. I thought of the ham in my dress. How could I explain a slice of ham in my pocket when we were all so hungry? The guard shoved us both to the ground. He waved his rifle around our faces, yelling in Russian. I huddled near Jonas, staring down the barrel of his gun. I closed my eyes. Please, no. He kicked gravel at our legs and then spat. Devi, pointing towards the train car. Mother's face was a shen. She did a poor job of hiding her fear this time. Her hands trembled and she was nearly panting. You could have been killed. We're okay, Mother, announced Jonas. His voice shook. We went to find Papa. Where is Andreas? Mrs. Arvidus looked over our shoulders. He came with us, I said. But where is he? She demanded. He wanted to look for his father, I said. His father? She sighed deeply. Why doesn't he believe me? I told him again and again about that father of his. She turned round and began to cry. I realised I'd made a great mistake. I should not have left Andreas behind. We found him, mother. We found papa, said Jonas. People crowed towards us crowded towards us. They wanted to know how many men were on the train and if we saw their loved ones. He said he thinks we're going to Siberia, Jonas reported, and you gave us some ham. The three of us ate it, but we saved a piece for you. Lena, give mother the piece of ham. I reached in my pocket and handed the piece of ham to mother. She saw it, the ring on my thumb. In case you need money, I said. He said you could sell it. And he said to remember the oak tree, said Jonas. Mother took the ring off my thumb and put it to her lips. She began to cry. Don't cry, Mother, said Jonas. Girl, shouted the bold man. What else did you bring to eat? Lena, give this piece of ham to Mr. Stallis, said Mother, sniffling. He's hungry. Mr. Stallis, the bold man, had a name. I moved towards him. His withered arms were green and purple with bruises. I held out the piece of ham. That's your mother's, he said. What else do you have? That's all he gave me. How many cars on the train? I don't know, I said. Maybe 20? He said we're going to Siberia. Yes. He's right, probably. Your father, he said. Mother's crying subsided. I held out the piece of ham again. That's your mother's, said the bold man. Make sure she eats it. I don't like ham anyway. Now leave me alone. He wouldn't come with us, my brother explained to Mrs. Ar Arvides. He and Lena started fighting and he said he was going to check more cars. We weren't fighting, I interrupted. If they find him wandering around and discover he is the son of an officer, said Mrs. Arvidus. She hid her face in her hands. The grey-haired man shook his head and wound his watch. I felt guilty. Why didn't I stay with Andreas or insist him to come back with us? I looked out of the train car, hoping to see him. Two Soviets pulled a priest down the platform. His hands were bound and his cassock was dirty why a priest but then why any of us chapter 13 the sun rose and the temperature in the car quick, quickly climbed the wet smell of feces and urine hovered over us like a filthy blanket andreas had not returned and mrs arvidus wept so hard it scared me i felt sick with guilt a guard approached the car and handed up a bucket of water and a bucket of slop Everyone surged towards the buckets. Wait, said Miss Gribus, as if she were directing her class. We must all take just a bit to ensure everyone can eat. The slop resembled grey animal feed. Some children refused to eat it. Jonas found a package from Mother's cousin Regina. Inside was a small blanket, a sausage and a coffee cake. Mother shared the food, giving a small piece to everyone. The baby continued to wail. Owner twisted 
and screamed right along with the ch with the child, who still refused to eat and looked dar a darker shade of pink. Hours passed. Andreas didn't return. Mother sat down next to me. How did your father look? She asked, smoothing my braids and putting her arm around my shoulder. Not too bad, I lied. I put my head on her shoulder. Why are they taking us? Is it really because Papa works at university? That doesn't make sense. The bold man groaned. See? Like him, I whispered. He's not a teacher. He's a stamp collector. And he's being deported, I said. He's not just a stamp collector, said Mother under her breath. Of that, I'm certain. He knows too much. What does he know? Mother sighed, shaking her head. Stalin has a plan, my love. The Kremlin will do anything to see it through. You know that. He wants Lithuania for the Soviet Union, so he's moving us out temporarily. But why us? I asked. They already moved into Lithuania last year. Isn't that enough? It's not just us, dear. I imagine he's doing the same to Latvia, Estonia and Finland. It's complicated, said Mother. Try to rest. I was exhausted but couldn't sleep. I wondered if my cousin Jonah was also on a train somewhere. Maybe he was near, Maybe she was near Papa. Papa said I could help him. But how could I help him if we were really going to Siberia? I dozed off, thinking of Andreas, trying to see his face. As I walked by the piece, my feet stopped. The face. It was enchanting, like nothing I had ever seen. It was a charcoal portrait of a young man, the corners of his lips turned up. Yet, despite his smile, the pain on his face made my eyes well with tears. The sub subtleties within his hair blended so softly yet created strong variation. I stepped closer to inspect. Flawless. How did he achieve such sheer, such sheer shade without so much as a pause or a fingerprint? Who was the artist? And who was the young man? I looked at the signature. Munch. Young lady, follow the group, please. That's part of the, a different exhibit, said our guide. Some of the students had complained earlier. How could they explain about a field trip to the art museum? I'd been looking forward to it for months. The guide's shoes clacked down the tiled floor. My body moved toward, but my head remained fixed on the drawing. Fixed on the face. I rubbed my fingers together. A light touch, yes. But with confidence, I couldn't wait to try it. I sat at the desk in my bedroom. I felt the charcoal vibrate slightly as I pushed it across the page. The sound it made against the paper gave me chills. I bit my bottom lip. I ran my middle finger along the edge, softening the harsh line. Not quite, but almost. I pushed the tip of my finger through the dirt on the floor, drawing, drawing his name, Munch. I would recognise his art anywhere, and Papa would recognise mine. That's what he meant. He could find me if I left a trail of drawings. Chapter 14 When I woke, the car was dark. I moved to the front and hung my head over the side for air. My hair swung away from my neck. A rush of air swelled around my face and I breathed deeply. Gravel crunched. I snapped my head up, expecting to see a guard. No one was there. The gravel shifted again. I dropped my head back down, looking under the train. A dark figure huddled near the wheel. I squinted, trying to focus in the low light. A bloody hand lifted towards me, shaking. I pulled back before realising. Andreas. I turned toward Mother. Her eyes were closed, her arms wrapped around Jonas. I looked out on the train platform. The NKVD marched two cars down, their backs to me. The little girl with Dolly sat on her knees near the door. I put my finger to my lips. She nodded. I lowered myself down off the car, trying not to make a sound. My chest thumped, remembering the guard pointing the gun at me. I stepped closer and stopped. A truck drove by somewhere outside its lights momentarily sweeping under the car. Andreas stared off with a blue, battered face. He had sw swollen pillows for eyes. His shirt was covered in blood, his lips sliced. I knelt down beside him. Can you walk? A little, he said. I peeked out to see the guards. They stood in a group smoking, four cars down. I tapped lightly near the bathroom hole. The grouchy woman's face appeared.
her eyes widened. Okay, everyone, that is all I'm reading today. I really hope you have enjoyed this episode. And yeah, thanks for listening.